<laughs> okay, so <clears throat> all right. So uh, my research was done on uh, electron and electric field uh, for the purpose of uh, electrochemistry. So if my classmates can remember back to first year chemistry, it's a redox reaction. So have one atom, another atom, electrons moving from the one atom to the other one. This one loses, it's reduced. This one gains, one just oxidized, and the oxidation states of the atoms will change. And so the hypothesis moving forward <coughs> is that if you apply an electric field to this reaction, that a negative electric field will decrease the activation energy of the reaction and will increase the probability of the reaction occurring. And so this is just uh, equations used in the theory behind the, how the MATLAB propagates a wave packet. And next I have a couple of videos showing the field running. So we have uh, two different potential wells. We have the proton donor and the proton acceptor. Proton acceptor's well is twice as big, so as goes uh, wave pack goes from left to right, it should progress towards that as time goes on. But this proton is what electron. Hmm? proton electron. Electron? Did I say pro? Yeah. Electron. <laughs> so this is with no electric field. As you see, the green line is a flat slope. And so, as it goes from left to right, it's tending to go to more towards the right here. But there's still a lot of electrons at the left side. So when we apply the negative electric field, what happens is when the tries to propagate to the left, it can't <coughs> overcome this barrier. So then the slope pushes more of the electron, electrons to the right side, so towards the proton acceptor. So we have a higher charge density on the right side. And so to compare that to, if you put a positive electric field, as it tries to go to the right side, it cannot overcome that barrier. And so very few electrons will make it to the proton acceptor. So reaction doesn't happen much at all. The MATLAB was slow recording these and calculating it at the same time for whatever reason the other day. And so this is a probability graphs over time. I have no electric field as the control and see it about 40% of the electrons should be on the proton acceptor side. Electron. Hmm? Not proton, electron. Oh. You In my mind, I'm saying <laughs> electron. You, you continue talking proton acceptor instead of electron. I don't know why I keep saying proton. You like protons. I'm a positive guy, let's just say that. <laughs> and so, uh, this is uh, the best. Uh, probability of reaction I got was from a negative point, well, this is supposed to be 0 0.08, not 0 0.8 volts, that would be too much. So then there's a almost double the probability, so I think it was at a, like 0 0.67, 67% of the electron being on the right side. Then, uh, unpredicted by me, is that if there's too much of a negative charge, the those reaction probability will increase slowly, but then it'll taper back down. Is a, my understanding is the electric field was too powerful, so it actually escapes both the left and the right wells and doesn't stay in either atom. And then one with the very slight positive charge, so is that it's 30% chance 
of electron being on the right side of the barrier as opposed to no charge where it was about 40%. <clears throat> And this is a graphic representing the data of different voltages I used. So uh, zero voltage uh, of the slope. So it's a change of probability over time or change of charge density over time. So the higher the slope, the higher the current going from left to right on the potential graph. So as it shows, uh, so you have two more powerful peaks at about 0.8. Then as you go to more increasingly drawn negative fields, it goes down to zero probability. <coughs> Same thing as you head towards the right and positive values. So the results that I got supported my initial hypothesis up to a point. I didn't uh, anticipate the stronger negative values reducing probability and I got I was very happy the simulations I got them to work without too much fuss it's a hard part for all of us and can be future work there uh, can uh, specify it to do work with specific materials and specific reactions and okay that's it for that one. No, thank you. Questions? So you, and maybe you can go to this figure where you're showing your curves and uh, there are that one, that two, linear, y maximum, that is three, that is four, previous one, I mean, one, yeah, this one. This one? Yeah. So what does this mean, that one, that two, like, what, what the col different colors for the slides, what exactly is they, how they are different? Oh, this is the, these top two lines. I'm not sure between the difference between the red and yellow or the red and, I mean, the blue and yellow and the red and purple, but the top two lines are the probability of the electron being on the left side than the left wells, and this is the bottom two lines are the probability of the electron being on the right side of the wells. My, the, my question is, what's the, dif yeah, what's the difference between these colors, like red and purple or something like this? Because on, on the other graph, it's just marked that the one, that the two. They have different initial conditions. You differently prepare your initial state, or what's really this mean? Or the same initial conditions and different slightly different methods. <laughs> Sounds about right. I'm not sure. <laughs> 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 so I was never exactly sure, but I always uh, the slopes were all calculated from the red line. Okay. Still a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, what we we discussed about a month ago presentation by Kevin about different representations of momentum operator for this code. We're just using different methods, and that's why you see a little bit deviation in this video. Mm -hmm. More questions? To, oh, please. So you, <clears throat> for your one-dimensional potential, what does that represent? Because there seems like five or six wells. For one and five or six for the other. What does that mean? <laughs> try, please try. Let's go back there. David, mm -hmm. would you like to help? To, uh, I would uh, just appreciate that. So they're kind of having some periodicity there, right? Yeah. yeah. Do, do you see any connection between your presentation and this? Uh, Maybe it somehow can be related to periodicity in a solid structure. And Kevin, you Position of atoms? May, may help you. In the lattice so I'm of perspective? I'm guessing as, a, as it goes in between spaces in a molecular structure. Mm, good. Very good. It's one can refine answer to like better per perfectionism, but it's it's a good direction. So, everyone is with with uh, Joseph. Can you repeat your, your answer? <laughs> so it's a potential wells is a basically 
space that's in between the atoms and like a crystal lattice or molecular structure. Okay, makes sense. So where the spatial location of uh, nuclei correspond to dips in your potential? Yes. Okay. And it looks like you have an interface. Same as in that's previous talks, right? Mm -hmm. in, in, uh, your potentials have dips where atoms were located. Well, right? but in the values of depthness. So we got negative one. Yeah. More questions to Joseph? If not, that, thank you once again. And uh, Dylan.